20 tons. That's a, this truck. And I was happy as like, wow, I got 20 tons order. But believe me, guys, it's so, so, so small. <laughs> From these 20 tons, you get like, you roughly get your expenses like for telephone or internet. And then, then the orders, then you keep going, keep going, and you get your first 300 tons. And then you, wow, thinking, that's like a railway dragon, right? <laughs> and it's just one. But you want them several at least, like, right? <laughs> and it's easy, guys. You just uh, don't limit yourself, you know? The competition is for small numbers, not for big numbers. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Wakey Wakey. Today I'm going to introduce you to Natalie, um, a young Russian girl who's the, the most spontaneous entrepreneur that I've met so far. She's, uh, she's just wild, she's starting business all over the places and she's just, uh, she's just lovely and, and fantastic to be with and you're going to see this in just a second. Funny thing about Natalie is that she's the, um, the first speaker that I've managed to get on an interview for Wakey Wakey from the Digital Nomad that happened a few weeks ago in Chiang Mai. Uh, she, I remember sitting at the first row of that event with my friend Rory, an English guy, an English entrepreneur, and we were just laughing the whole way because she was just presenting in such a spontaneous way how she met her her suppliers and how she got started in the entrepreneur adventure and it was just so inspiring and yet so so interesting and 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 funny at the same time i i think you're going to enjoy this interview very much natalie is just such a pleasure to be around and you'll see that when if you are lucky enough to actually meet a person like this you you better do like me and just try and learn as much as you can from this person and and it's just a pleasure to stick around a person like Natalie. So here you go, guys. I'll see you again at the end of this video to wrap this up and enjoy. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for coming. Thanks for yeah. meeting me. Thank you for inviting. Yeah, mm -hmm. with pleasure. I'm glad you're here. Uh, so I met you last week at the t 10 days ago at the Digital Nomad event. Um, the perception of time is being funny. So <laughs> you're probably better now. I, I actually, I, think it, was, I yeah. think it was almost two weeks ago now. Uh -huh. so, and you presented uh, some of your businesses and what was your mindset and uh, I was stunned, it was really, really good. Mm. And, uh, but before we start talking about that, I was wondering if you could just tell me a bit more about you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe where you come from, I mean, whatever you want to say about you and how you ended up traveling and mm -hmm. how you ended up, yeah, being an entrepreneur in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. oh, well, it's a long story, and a long story short. I'm from Russia and I'm coming from a corporate world so I was gonna get like an <laughs> it's cool yeah. it's cool so you were from you were working in, in companies I used to be a lawyer right right yeah. I remember that yeah yeah, yeah. and like I always was thinking that it's not who I want to be, it's like it's too labeled, it's too restrictive and of course like like the pressure from the society that everything you need is money and work hard and then whatever when you get like hired. But on the back of my mind there was always sitting like something that, no it's just, it's not right. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was gonna be ready to do that like until I'm 35 and then retired as a millionaire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and something happened? Then it just collapsed, you know, the big depression. And no, I cannot live like that anymore. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. you had a depression and you were like, what am I doing with my life, maybe? Uh, it was like it was built and building up because I was also studying hard, getting like all sorts of degrees to get like higher, always like the best. And then I just, I had an option whether to stay at where I was. Mm, in Russia? No, it was in uh, Scotland at that time. Yes, in Scotland, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were a lawyer in Scotland? Uh, at that time I was an advisor 
in citizen advice bureau because I was considering like to change my career a little bit from conservative lawyer to alternative dispute solution. Mm-hmm. Then I got a, a certification in a commercial mediation, and I was gonna pursue like maybe to open up something my own as a uh, mediator. Mm-hmm. And then I was just went into uh, citizens advice bureau just to get a practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I worked there uh, for three months, mm-hmm. and then they offered me whether I want to stay longer, of course, or and they asked me how long how long are you ready to spend here? And I said honestly, like I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they were ready to pay for my visas, for my like everything to get me going there. And I really loved the uh, my boss out there and the team. Everything like was great. It just like there was something else on the back of my mind. And it didn't feel right. Yeah, it didn't feel the, right. Okay. Yeah. And, and so what happened then? And then uh, my brother lives in New Zealand, mm-hmm. and I said, so he invited me over, and it was like yeah, it's like a chance to unwind, to relax a little bit, mm-hmm. and then to think about life. So I went to New Zealand to visit my brother. I spent there three weeks. So we both were like thinking, what can we do, so on and so forth. And then it was sh- for sure that we want to like have our own business mm-hmm. since we were like. So this idea of own business mm-hmm. is been following me since school, basically. I always knew that there will be something. I just don't know what. Okay, and it, it was not something that was... Why didn't you do it in Europe or... Why did you, why did you do it in Asia or, or Australia or and then uh, New Zealand? Here I am for another reason. I wasn't invited here for another project okay. to Chiang Mai. So it's my third time in Chiang Mai. And I'm still tied up in this project and I want to finish that. Mm-hmm. But that's basically why I'm here and I just... Uh, Got stuck here. <laughs> you just got stuck here. Okay, let's yeah. come back to the story then. So you go to New Zealand to meet your brother. Yeah. And you had in mind that you wanted to start a business with your brother. Yeah. Okay. But then my visa expired and it was January, uh, end of January. And I thought to myself, man, I don't want to go to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> it's super freezing out there. It's like... <laughs> yeah, no way. Yeah, no, no way. way going back home. My options. So I'm looking on the, we are looking on the map, and here we go, Fiji, neighboring island. <laughs> and as a Russian, I don't need a visa for four months out there. Okay. So here we go, Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. So I ended up on Fiji, and then I was uh, traveling there, uh, then got involved in another project, and then... I stayed there for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I got, I discovered this. I've been already looking in, like into online marketing courses, all other sorts of courses. And then I found this uh, that here in Chiang Mai, there's there was gonna be two online marketing events. Mm-hmm. And from Fiji, I went there. Okay. Yeah, to this online marketing okay. events studied there, met, met some other people, mm-hmm. and then I went back to Fiji. For a holiday as well, or with a business idea or something? With business ideas, okay. yeah, and just working on there in uh, management and real estate okay. on Fiji. So just uh, helping out uh, friends slash business partner. Okay. Yeah. And then at some point you you meet someone right it's yeah it was my birthday it was, birthday. <laughs> it was my birthday and i just happened to be at this particular uh coffee shop co- coffee shop slash bar like where all the sale uh all the sales sa- sailing people sailors ah okay sailors. Uh, with the yachts and stuff uh-huh. so i have i had like quite a lot of people there that i knew mm-hmm. like my friends and there was like this guy who, are, who I never met, and we just started talking, and he appeared to be like a timber supplier. A timber supplier, okay. Yeah. Timber is wood, right? Yeah. 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 Like this. Okay. But more better quality. And if I remember, 
you offered him your services. Yeah, as a mar- as, as a marketing. As a mom, okay. Yeah, as marketing and sales, and then we just developed it in such a way that he offered like why don't you bring it to Russia? Because I said like there's huge market out there, and lots of opportunities, and he said yeah of course why not. So so in the discussion you were yeah. telling him you know there's a huge market in Russia, and then he tells you. Oh no, the, I I said that. There is an opportunity for sure, but then after research, I got back to him. Like, yeah, there is a demand. There's yeah. demand, yeah. and he said, "Why don't you do it?" Yeah. And that's how you started. That's the... how I started. Yeah. So that was your first official business. Uh, official business. I mean, that was your first business. That you. That's how your first business started. I don't know if you mean like how I did money before that. I mean, I was before university. I was a tour guide as a freelancer. Okay. And then during my first two years of studies, I was like a designer, graphic designer slash brand manager. Freelancer as well? Yeah, freelancer. Okay, so But nothing like... Uh, yeah, basically just looking for somebody who would like to outsource me. Mm-hmm. Not something major. And this is re- this was this really is major. the real deal. And it was almost an accident the way it happened because you met this guy and then you Basically, had a discussion. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And then okay. Yeah, yeah and then uh, like yeah, of course you can do that. But this is uh, with this timber, it's like it's going slow, and then we uh, then my brother found another supplier, timber supplier in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. We now deal with him too. And then because it's it goes so slow and I wanted something more. Okay. That's how I, I got involved into sugar. Sugar. So yeah. this is also trade, like Tim like Yeah, yeah, trade. yeah, come on come on. Yeah. So how did you get into the sugar? Into sugar I was just researching and thinking. You know, I always thought that I want to sell something that finishes and people want more and more Mm -hmm. like that they would come back and I I wanted to sell like decent amount because if you sell like watches or something small how many items do you need to sell like to get a decent amount of cash amount of like cash or satisfaction Cash and satisfaction go together. <laughs> <laughs> to some extent, yeah. So how much was enough for the sugar? How much did you need to sell for you to feel good about it? Oh, well, like, you know, first 300 tons was pretty satisfactory. 300 tons of sugar. Yeah, yeah just one a, deal. But big. now it's, it's, now when I'm dealing with it, it's, it's so small. Yeah, the 300 tons now for you is Yeah, so it's small. like nothing. <laughs> oh, well, okay. It's like, you know, bringing it in a... In a sachet in a pocket, <laughs> here you're 300 tons. So how much do you typically sell now, like on a given deal? Now my deals are really, my orders and inquiries are increasing because now I export from uh, Cambodia. Okay. And now we are talking like 20,000 tons. 20,000 tons? Yeah. And is it, do you, who's your, who, so who's your customer? Is it the Russian market? Is it other markets in the world? For now, just Russia. Okay. Yeah. For sugar. That's great. Yeah. Good, okay. Uh, what's hard in all this for you and what is easy? What is easy in all this? Hard, cold calls. Cold calls? Cold calls is hard. What do you mean? Um, I guess it's just... It's getting easier and I just don't think about it like that personal about it anymore. But at the beginning it was really the hardest. like. Personally-wise, I don't like talking on the phone, mm-hmm. and it's like taking somebody else from their reality when I don't see them, mm. and I don't know where I where they are at the moment. If like if they're ready to talk, if they want to talk. Mm-hmm. Okay. But once you get over, it's like okay, you, you pick up the phone. Oh well, whatever. I just, I just play a game. Okay. And we'll see what happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it happens like 
in a good way sometimes no but then i might call again <laughs> maybe they're in a better mood and they already like know me and then it's just persistency persistency yeah that's is that is that hard for you to be persistent or do you see that something quite easy no it's, it's just like it is it is as it is, as it is. It, yeah it is, it is. What about the mindset? Because I remember at the presentation you had this, this great mindset about, you know, mm. don't overthink it, you know, do it, and then believe in yourself. Yeah. Is that something that's particularly easy for you to do? You know, when you're handling your business, maybe, you know, times are difficult, do you, do you always believe in yourself? Or, or is it something that's kind of hard as well for you to do? I think for me it's not a question in believe in myself. It's, um, You're thinking in Russian, aren't you? No, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, I have I have a really like Zen mindset mindset. Mm -hmm. A Zen mindset. A Zen mindset. Yeah. So. You because you, you could you will never guess what other people think and what might happen and it's better not to solve the problem before it comes. Yes, okay. So are you Because it might never happen. And it might never happen. Yeah. yeah. Because you that's what I'm like, for instance. I worry a lot about things. Yeah, it's better not to worry because you create this energy cloud which attracts like certain things that are undesired. That are undesired. So what does that mean for you when you're, you know, you're doing business? Mm -hmm. Does that mean you only think about the good positive outcome or you're also thinking about the bad things? Or, or you just focus on the good things? I don't think. Uh, you don't think? <laughs> <laughs> That's so I mean, I just... <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I mean, to, to a degree. I have a task and I and I need to do it, and I do it, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Because you see, when you do a thing yourself, it just nobody knows and nobody expects, and you you never know the result, so you create the result, mm -hmm. and it's it's gonna be beautiful and perfect in a way that it's gonna be like it should be, mm -hmm. and you learn through the process. And it's worth trying and making the steps with any outcome, really. So, if you do fail in the end, it doesn't matter because you've tried? Oh, what's, what's the fail? It's, it's a word, yeah. <laughs> it's a vocabulary <laughs> word, to fail. Maybe if you don't reach your objectives, that doesn't matter so much as long as you've tried, right? Is that maybe the idea? Just do the best you can. I, I, like. How many businesses do you have? You talked about timber, timber and sugar. Yeah, timber, sugar, and now since this year we start hiring the furniture mm -hmm. and also decking. Yeah, but legally we own just one and others. So for uh, furniture, for example, we are just official representative and for sugar I do contract based. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. And with all these businesses, are you making money? Like, are you living comfortably? Could you live anywhere in the world? And yeah, just the matter of uh, visa issues and like, you know. But is that, is, is that, is, is that an issue? Like, do you even consider, I um, don't know where this question is going, but is, vi is the visa something you pay attention to because of the cost or is it like, it's okay, I make enough money, I don't even have to pay attention to it? I pay attention to bureaucracy mm -hmm. and lifestyle of the country at this stage. Okay. And probably the here, what keeps me in are the people. People keep me in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what uh, you talked about lifestyle? How? What is your lifestyle like? Uh, lifestyle is constantly changing and evolving, and like I don't have like I have to work like nine to five every day. It's like one day I might take some time off. Or if I'm very busy, I can work like the whole week through, 
or if I decide to go somewhere, I just go like this. But since this year, I decided that I will take some time for sports and social activities. Okay, so it's hard yeah. work, and you're learning how to handle. Yeah, yeah. Because different. before that, I was like purely hard working, just sitting in my cave, and but no. So said enough of that. Okay. What keeps you going with all these projects? Like, what what drives you? <laughs> I'm laughing because last time you said love. Love, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the freedom mm -hmm. and like every day is different day. Mm. And just curiosity mm -hmm. if I can do it. Mm -hmm. And I still have some wishes at the back of my mind so that like I want to be purely independent and at some point not to think about money. Mm -hmm. So probably money is still quite a bit of motivation. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. So freedom. 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 And uh, you said that, yeah, so what's been your happiest or most reward rewarding moment or the most exciting thing that's happened to you? Like, what, was there a moment since you started where you uh -huh. thought, wow, you know, that just felt so, I don't know how to explain it, but... First deals. <laughs> First deals, yeah? yeah okay. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like... First, first moment when, yeah, the contract is signed. Wow, fifty percent is forwarded. Wow, it's like, and then the buyer, the client, got his order. Wow, and then the, yeah. the second half is forwarded. Wow, the deal is done. So, so, so cool. do you feel like excited, or is it a big sense of achievement, or is it relief because of the money? It's like the achievement, yeah. Yeah, achievement. It okay. works. It works. <laughs> Okay, excellent. Yeah. I don't even know if I want to ask the next question. What, you know, what's the difference between what you're doing now and what you were doing before when you were working for corporations? I mean, I think you just answered that question. Yeah, it's... Freedom, being your own boss is, is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so the freedom of being your own freedom, boss, yeah. making the calls, you know, making decisions. Making decisions, deciding on the lifestyle deciding whether I want to proceed with the work or not. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, just uh, making choices okay. on the everyday. What's next? What's next for you, Natalie? Next in a one way. <sighs> any plans for the, 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 the future of the business? Or any new businesses in mind? Or um, any new place you want to travel to? Travel to everywhere, that's for sure. Okay. For business, I'm, I'm going to Malaysia, Singapore, and China. Mm -hmm. And then for the new business opportunities, for sure, yeah, why not? But in general, in business, I want to stay like probably two, two and a half years. And then just, um, I do feel that I have different purpose. So this is just a stage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna change again. You're always changing. That's yeah, good. always changing. Yeah. Cool. So maybe sell the businesses at some point. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. And yeah. be an early retire retiree, or <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Now the other thing. This is my last question. I ask this to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about my audience. Um, so a lot of my audience is um, is back home. Yeah. They're sometimes quite afraid to take that leap. Maybe mm -hmm. try something which is in the domain of mm -hmm. the entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. What would be uh, your suggestion, your recommendation to these guys to take that first step mm -hmm. in, uh, in doing things their way? Mm -hmm. I would suggest to take risks, get out of your comfort zone every day with the, like even the smallest things, maybe just on the everyday basis, do something different, choose a different path to go to the shop or like, take, go to places where you never thought you would go, like concerts or whatever, just social places, go to business meetings, go to conferences where you might meet like like-minded people, go to like go out of from your cave and from the everyday routine. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And there's also, that's great, and there's also something you told me once, which was believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, for sure, yeah. And listen to yourself. Like, whatever idea comes to mind, just write it down. Don't just let it go. And analyze what's around you, what are your passions are, what are your hobbies, hobbies are. Maybe you just can proceed with your hobby, and who knows? It might bring something good into your life. Awesome. Have you ever had doubts about your path? I did, yeah. Yeah? Okay. I did, I had doubts. I, and I had my ups and downs and uh, thoughts were... Like, yeah, of course, like anybody else. Yeah, okay. But just... It's always worth trying anything. It's just... It's better to try then not to try to regret the whole life. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Natalie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks You're a very lot. welcome and good luck, everybody. Ah, cool. Thanks. Hey. It. That was it, guys, for Natalie. So what did I tell you? Fantastic, wasn't it? Good. I hope you learned a lot through Natalie. And Natalie, of course, I want to thank you on behalf of my audience for sharing so many useful details for anybody that wants to get started in an entrepreneurial way. Guys, again, from Wakey Wakey, if you enjoyed this, uh, please like the video, leave a comment, share with your friends, share to people that need inspiration, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. And stay tuned on Wakey Wakey for more videos and more inspiration. Thank you, guys.